All right, guys, welcome back to Econ Class. Today we are going to be looking at incentives and then move on to economic systems. All right, so the objectives for today identify the role that incentives play in our lives, differentiate between positive, negative, and then perverse incentives, differentiate between command and market economies, and then tying it all together, understand the role that incentives play in command and market economies. All right, so first off, incentives, okay? A very important role in economics, very important role in our lives. It's anything that enables or motivates a particular course of action. So it could be the fear of getting a speeding ticket. It keeps us from speeding on the highways. Or the fact that I know if I don't go to work, I'm going to lose my job. That's my incentive to keep going back to work. If you work on commission, that commission, that extra money you're gonna get by selling things or doing whatever tasks you need to do, that is your incentive to do that job. Coming to school, you, the incentive to do that could be a number of different things, just success in life, getting through high school, not getting a truancy ticket, any of these things could be incentives to do that task. All right, so the assumption that we make, and this is another big assumption in economics, just like everybody's an optimizing individual, we are making the assumption that people will respond predictably to positive and negative incentives. Now, this is limited to the classroom. In AP Econ, in the economics class, we assume things like when price goes up, we buy less. When price goes down, we buy more. People respond to those incentives predictably. But, however, in the real world, people respond to positive and negative incentives, but not always in the way intended. Okay, so we make some assumptions in class, we make some assumptions on the test, but in reality, we have what's known as a perverse incentive. All right, it's an incentive that has an unintended and undesirable result. So one of the best examples historically was in French colonial uh, Vietnam, in Hanoi, they had a rat infestation. So in order to solve the problem, they started to pay the people a certain amount of money per rat pelt, or rat tail, whichever version you want to sell it, uh, rat pelt that they brought in. Okay, so it, we had an incentive set up. The more rats you bring in, the more money you would get. Okay, sounds like a great plan. The problem is, is that they are optimizing individuals too. And even though the goal was to get rid of the rats, many of these uh, Vietnamese citizens started to breed rats because it was easier than going out and catching rats. So a perverse incentive is an unintended and undesirable result, contrary to that of the incentive makers. So they ended up infesting more with rats in the city than they had originally had, all because of the incentive they had set up. But remember, in the classroom, we assume that people are going to respond predictably. All right, now incentives play a huge role in economics, and if you want further reading on it, take a look at Naked Economics and Freakonomics. Naked Economics, the first chapter called Incentives Matter, does a great job of under explaining why incentives have to be set up right to get the desired outcomes. And Stephen Levitt and Stephen Dubner do a great job in free economics, just exploring all sorts of different incentives and how people respond to them. All right, now on to economic systems. An economic system is simply an organized way that a country or society provides the wants and needs to their citizens. It's a way that they allocate their scarce resources to everybody that's out there. It's how they answer the what, how, and for whom questions. All right, we got two major economic systems that we're gonna be looking at on a spectrum and then everything else in between. The two major types are command and market economies. So let's take a look at what the difference is between these two. In a market economy, price and the allocation of these scarce resources is determined by the market itself. It's determined by producers and consumers acting in their own best interest. In a command economy, we've got government that makes all these calls some central planning agency or some benevolent social planner deciding who's gonna get what, how much is gonna be produced, how they're going to produce it. All these different questions are answered by the government. Now the incentive structure is really the problem with a command economy. Because in a market economy, we know that everybody's an optimizing individual and everybody's working in their own best interest. And because of that, the invisible hand kind of guides everything to where it needs to be. In a command economy, the incentive structure is based upon the greater good of the economy or of the society. Everybody's doing what they can to make everybody else better off, all right? The allocation of resources in a market economy is not equal. It's unequal. It's determined by that price, or price system or the market itself. So in a command economy, 
equality is emphasized, okay? The government decides who's going to get what, so the government allocates the resources, and you know, quite often they do that through a rationing system. They might manipulate prices depending on how extreme this command economy is, or issue ration coupons, or just some sort of distribution. Now, regulation in a market economy, in a pure market economy, very, very little, if any at all. In a command economy, regulation is full. The government's deciding every aspect of it. They can control you know, what worker laws are, they can control how many hours a day you work. All these things are determined by the government. Consumers in a market economy are given a variety of different goods to choose from. There's high customer satisfaction, quality is higher, all due to that competition. Now when we get to a command economy, the needs outweigh the need for variety and satisfaction, so they focus on what the consumers need. And we might not see choices. You might have very limited choices, but you're getting what you absolutely need. Now innovation is another difference. Innovation in our country, or our economy I should say, is promoted through competition. All right. Apple phones, Samsung phones, they're competing with one another and they, they're constantly innovating to grab those consumers. If we look at a command economy, it's decided by the government. The government is going to say, all right, we're going to work on this aspect of this product, we're going to work on this aspect of that product. It's not based out of want, it's based out of need. All right, now ethics. In a market economy, sometimes ethics are ignored for profits and that is one of the problems. In a command economy, they can say, well, this is an unethical decision, so we're not going to do this. It's decided by the government. It doesn't mean that they always make the best decisions, but it means that they're allowed to, and it's not up to the business owner to make that call. The environmental aspect of it all, it's sometimes once again ignored for profits in a market economy. A pure market economy, they can do whatever they want to. In a command economy, the government is going to be the one deciding. If they decide we need to worry about global warming, they can make that call. They can start issuing regulations. They can start deciding we're going to stop producing this. We're going to produce more of this. We're going to promote green energy. That command economy has the ability to do that without a whole lot of problem. All right, so that's the big differences right there. In reality, there are ex virtually no economies that are all pure market or all pure command. In reality, we lie somewhere on the spectrum. All right, on the right here, we have the market. On the left, we have the command, okay? So more towards a market, a pure market economy, we've got countries like Hong Kong, Singapore, Estonia, Switzerland. They have few regulations and it's the market that determines most of the allocation of resources. As we move a little bit more, we're getting into what we call the mixed economies. And that's where we fall in the United States. Even though we consider ourselves a market economy, we are more of a mixed economy because we have aspects of, you know, a command. You know, like when we get to certain things like who's going to get education, the government comes in and says everybody's going to get education. Who's going to get health care? Most of us are going to get health care. So the government are making some of these calls on things that the pure free market may not provide. So even though we consider ourselves a market, we're more of a mixed economy. Sweden, Germany, they start to get a little more socialistic in some aspects. It means the government is determining what, how, and for whom to produce in more areas than in our country. All right, as we start to move more and more towards the command, we see countries like China and Venezuela, where the government is heavily involved in determining the what, how, and for whom questions. And then finally, in the most extreme versions, we have North Korea and Cuba which we consider them to be the communist nations in this country, in this world. They are the closest to a pure command economy, but even in those countries, some market aspects still exist. All right, now the United States, what we're actually considered in the best term to be used for us is what we call a modified private enterprise economy. We call ourselves capitalists. There's a lot of different words to explain what we actually are, but mixed, modified, whatever it might be, we're a little more leaning towards market than we are command, but we have aspects of both. All right, now in a command economy, there are pros and there are cons, just like there are in a market economy. So let's start with the market first. The pros, freedom. We have the freedom to do what we want to. The more market we are, the more freedom we're gonna have to get in, in business, to get out of business, to start up. There's less regulations. 
Um, because of competition, there's a variety of products in existence, and then high quality and high customer satisfaction are also part of that because of that competition. Because of that competition, we also have high efficiency, meaning we're getting more out of our resources, and there's a lot of innovation. Now, the cons of a market economy are some services are ignored. In a pure market economy, education, healthcare, police protection, all of these things aren't provided by the government and they would need to be provided by the market. So a lot of people would be left out. That's why we are not a pure free market in the United States. We are a mixed economy. Now, let's get on to the command. Security. People are taken care of. The government provides them what they need. They put in their effort and they're taken care of. Needs are met in most cases. I know there are real life examples, but in theory, a command economy, everybody's taken care of. And equality. On paper, in theory, a command economy provides equality, which a market economy might not. A market economy might provide equal opportunity, but command produces equality. All right, now the cons of a command economy, there's no innovation. All right, when the government's making the calls, there's really no other competitors. The government just says, you produce this, everybody's going to buy from you. And if you don't like what they have, you simply can't buy it. There's no variety, okay? Lower quality, all because of that lack of competition. And that lack of competition also causes the inefficiencies. Because the government's taking care of you no matter what, the incentive to work hard starts to diminish because you're going to be taken care of no matter what. So it's one of the problems with the command economy. On paper, they're great. But in practice, because of the incentives, the market economy has the automatic optimizing individual trying to do his best, trying to make it in the world, where the command economy, you're working for that greater good and that incentive starts to cause a problem. So in theory, command works perfect. In reality, it's not the best type. Market has its problems as well. It's by no means the, right, the perfect type of economy, but it seems to have a lot more efficiency than a command. All right, just some things to keep in mind. All right, now a quick heads up, just the type of terms and descriptors that you might see when somebody's describing a command or a market economy. In a market economy, we're gonna see things like price system, invisible hand, private property rights, capitalism, free enterprise, free market, competition and variety, and laissez-faire, all right, hands off. These are all descriptors of a market economy. Now, when we go down to a command, government is heavily involved. Central planning, there's some central planning agency determining what, how, and for whom to produce, all right? There's a benevolent social planner, which is the term they like to use in the questions. Uh, common good, everybody's working for the common good. Communal property, often used in a command economy. And communism. Socialism gets thrown in there too, but that's more of a mixed economy. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Please check out my next video. This one is on the circular flow of economic activity as well as the factors of production. So I'll see you guys next time.